Yo, Harp, there's a dodgeball tournament going down Wednesday at 6.30. We want to get a team of teachers. It's on. I'm Peyton. And I'm Lila. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week, the transcript crew goes backstage with Greece cast members, sits down with members of the ski team, and challenges the morals of NHS students. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. In a surprise verdict Thursday morning, a French court convicted Cardinal Philip Barberine of not reporting child sexual abuse dating back to the 1980s by Reverend Bernard Prenot. Barberine was given a six-month suspended prison sentence, which his lawyer said will be appealed. Five other defendants were acquitted, but Prenot, who has admitted to abusing Boy Scouts throughout the 70s and 80s, will be tried separately later this year. LeBron James passed Michael Jordan on Wednesday night to become the number four on the NBA's all-time scoring list. He started the LA Lakers versus Denver Nuggets game, needing just 12 points, and in the second quarter, tied Jordan at 32,292 career points. By halftime, James had 32,297 points. Michael Cohen in 2018 had his then attorney, Stephen Ryan, ask about the possibility of receiving a pardon from President Trump. Cohen's current lawyer, Lanny Davis, told the Wall Street Journal Wednesday. This request from Ryan was first reported Monday, but was not then confirmed by Cohen's camp. This news comes after Cohen previously told Congress under oath, quote, I've never asked for, nor would I accept, a pardon from Mr. Trump. Davis argued that there is no contradiction of the testimony because Cohen was talking about his actions after July 2018, quote, the period where he had made his decision to tell the truth. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini, and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. Let's bowl, let's bowl, let's rock and roll, because Greece opens next week. This classic is our first production since the 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee two years ago. Following last year's unfortunate cancellation, the musical has been in full swing as the cast and crew get ready for their opening night next Thursday. I got to talk to Sam Buell and Roxy Welch to learn about their characters and experiences in this iconic musical. I play Rizzo. And I play Sonny. In the 50s, there were these ideals for what women should be, and she sort of represents the polar opposite in every way. My character is Sonny, and Sonny is a bit of a, a know-it-all to a degree. He wants to be kind of a cool greaser, and he sometimes just comes off as an idiot. If I had to take one of the greasers to prom... Yeah, which one would you take? <sighs> Jake Rosen. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd either take Brendan or Tommy Hart. That's a good choice. That's a very good choice. What about you for pink ladies? Oh, I'd take Addie Rogers, <laughs> hands down. <laughs> Me and Addie are prom. Everyone would trample her. She's three feet tall. <laughs> but it would be so fun. I just always love doing musicals because I love to sing and I love music and I love dance. And it all sort of comes together in this sort of teamwork where I'm working with a bunch of my friends to make something. And it's just a lot of fun. My uh, story is a little bit different. I originally, I've never done a musical before. I've been involved in the music program at the school since my freshman year and I've been singing since sixth grade. Um, but I was originally a hockey player and I decided to stop playing. It was a 
difficult decision for me because I really love that sport. And I, I, I think I made a really good decision. I mean, the cast is great and I'm having an amazing time and it's completely different from playing a sport. I, on a serious note, the, the rehearsals have been going well. There's never a moment where I walk away from it being like I, I didn't have fun today. They can be stressful, it can be a lot, you'll get very tired, but it's always rewarding. And knowing that we're putting it towards a really good product is kind of what keeps my mind sane. Yeah, and if everyone's sort of on the same page, like we're all there ultimately to have a good time regardless of like how long the rehearsal is or how much work we have to do, we know that we're there to just do our thing. If you want to um, see me and Sam smoke fake cigarettes on stage for two hours straight. And fake drink as well. And have an amazing time with some classic jams. Come see Grease next week. Grease opens next Thursday, March 14th at 7 p.m. with shows continuing into Saturday. Tickets are only $5, so make sure to buy them and support your friends. Happy Friday. Hi, I'm Gabe. Hi, I'm Lulu. Welcome, Welcome to, to Hamped Up. up. Y'all ready for this? For our final winter sports segment, Gabe and I wanted to get the rundown from the ski team about how their season went this year. Despite multiple weather-based cancellations, warm temperatures, and a small roster, the skiers were able to make a strong showing and have a positive season. I sat down with senior captain Maisie McDonald. And I got up and close and personal with senior Aiden Shugru to learn more about his season. I don't think the weather cancellations really affect me personally um, for like my physical ability or mental ability, but they are like super annoying and it means that we have less races this year, which is pretty hard because I was hoping to make states but I didn't because I missed because we had less races and like less opportunities to perform well. I think bus rides for sure are a place where a lot of our team gets to socialize and bond and um, we play um, we sometimes play some games on the bus and also preseason is where a lot of um, my team members bonded with each other. It's mostly just like getting people organized up on the mountain, um, delegating like um, who's gatekeeping at that moment, and also like organizing team gear and stuff like that, and getting the team hype. We're joined here with Aiden Shugru. Happy Ghana Independence Day, by the way. Aiden. Thank you, thank you. I guess the first question uh, I'd like to ask you is, you know, a lot of people have heard that a few of the um, ski meets have gotten canceled. So do you think like the, the separation of meets throughout the year has affected your performance? Not at all. If anything, it's given me more rest. I mean, I think for some people it's affected them getting to states, but for me, I thought it was fine. So how has being on the ski team affected your social life? It's been pretty good. I think if anything, I've made more friends. Um, we get back pretty late, which makes it hard to hang out after school, but I've made a lot of new uh, freshman friends, which is always good. So as a lot of us know, all the other winter sports are held indoors. Um, so what's, what's the hardest part about having an outdoor sport in the winter? Um, pretty much, I mean, the weather obviously is a big factor. It can get really, 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 really cold. Um, you know, it, sometimes it rains and that's always crappy. And also just cancellations. Like when you're indoors, you just don't, Things don't get canceled unless, you know, the coach dies or something. But when, when you're skiing, you know, if it's warm, if it's rainy, it sucks. So I know in the past you've been pretty open about your uh, theory that the earth is flat amongst many others. Uh, but has that opinion changed in the recent months? Actually, it has. It has. Skiing down some, uh, some mountains has, has changed my mind a little bit. And now I don't believe the earth is flat. Come support my beautiful co-host Lulu and the rest of the girls' basketball team in the Western Mass Finals on Saturday at 5.45 p.m. at the Cage. The East Hampton Boys Ice Hockey Team played in the Western Mass Finals last night against Belchertown, and the Long Meadow Girls Ice Hockey Team will also play in the Western Mass Finals today at 4 p.m. Massive congratulations goes out to the boys' basketball team for a great season. I'm Lulu Kesson. And I'm Gabe Nicotera. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching Hamped Up. up. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo. On this day in 1864, Dr. Rebecca Lee Crumpler became the first black woman to be awarded a medical degree. Remarkable. In other news...
Are you a good person? Let's find out. Moral philosophy is the branch of philosophy concerning ethics. It allows a value assignation of good or bad to your actions. We wanted to better understand the field responsible for all our guilty consciences, so we sat down with an expert. A moral dilemma is when uh, often you are uh, trying to do the right thing, but one rule tells you to do one thing, and another rule tells you to do a different thing. And so you have to decide which one you can't do both. We wanted to know what our classmates thought, so we took to the halls to ask them some moral dilemmas. A madman suspecting of planting bombs that will go off in a short time is apprehended. Hundreds of people may die. The authorities cannot make him divulge the location of the bombs by conventional methods. He refuses to say anything and requests a lawyer to protect his Fifth Amendment rights against self-incrimination. A high-level official suggests torture. This is illegal, but the official thinks that it is the right thing to do. Do you agree? I think in this situation, it would be appropriate to use non-conventional interrogation techniques because otherwise a lot of people are going to die and they need to make tough decisions in 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 time, in short amount of time. I feel like I would say don't torture him because I think there might be other options still. I feel like I anything think, to get the information out to save the and people. I think we've, like, our country's already done that in the past, so. Now, torturing is not working, but it is evident that the madman is madly in love with his innocent wife. Is it reasonable, then, to torture his wife in front of him for this information? No. Not in front of him. No. I would draw the line at torturing someone else in front of him. No, I wouldn't torture his in innocent wife, but I would make him think that we're torturing his innocent wife, because then we can still get the information. Maybe not torture, but, like threatened torture. A fat man is leading a group of 11 people in a tour of a cave on a coast. As they turn to exit the cave, he is stuck in the opening, which collapsed a little after they entered. In a short time, high tide will be upon them, and unless he is unstuck, they will all inevitably drown except for the fat man whose head is out of the cave. It turns out that one tourist has with them a stick of dynamite. There seems to be no way to get him loose without using it, which will inevitably kill him. What should they do? They should not use the dynamite because if they use the dynamite, then they are taking an active decision to hurt somebody, whereas otherwise they could just take a passive decision to all die. I'd, I'd kill the fat man because it's more tourists than there are fat men. I could save, you could save 20 people. As There's a chance you got to try everything that's possible. Kill the one guy for the lives of the many. Yeah. I would say, based on it, I would say just use the dynamite. One life is different from a lot more. Or you could blow it up shove him out at the same time, run away, it blows up, nobody gets hurt. Now what if the person stuck was actually a pregnant woman? I sound like a terrible person, but I might have to say use the dynamite on the pregnant lady. <laughs> this sounds really morbid, but I think I might still say, like, save dynamite. as many people as you could. Yeah, and honestly, there's, a st there's still a chance that the baby could survive. Okay. I'd still kill her because it's more tourists than there are pregnant women, even if you can't, the pregnant women is possibly two. Now what if the tourist group was actually a school field trip group with a few chaperones and many young children? Yeah, I think any time when, when, it, when, it's, when it's people that, yes, that are, that are in the care of looking for us to make those decisions, absolutely. Then the chaperones should use the dynamite because it's not their kids. They don't get the, they don't like, they shouldn't decide other kids' life or death. Thank you for watching and for making good choices. I'm Amelia Tamayo and this has been In Other News. Bye! Thanks for, Thanks for watching. watching. We'd like to invite you to join us next Friday, March 15th at 11 a.m. for the Youth Climate Strike at the Massachusetts State House in Boston. We will be protesting our lawmakers' inaction on climate change and trying to protect our future. And be sure to go to devilsadvocate.news to watch a preview from this week's Jazz Festival.